Hi, I'm Natalie Jill, fat loss expert turned lifestyle and high performance coach. Welcome to Listen Up, the podcast. On this podcast, I do what I do best, taking complicated information that is relevant to us now and breaking it down simply with actionable steps you can implement to level up your life. I also regularly interview some of the most inspiring and courageous men and women on the planet who at their worst learned how to achieve success greater than anything they ever dreamed possible, creating everything from nothing. If you are new here, I encourage you to go back and listen from episode one when this podcast was previously called Leveling Up for the Full Transformative Experience. Today on Listen Up, I've got a special guest. This is my friend, Amanda Tress. She's a new friend of mine. Uh, she is the founder of Faster Way to Fat Loss. And it's, it's funny because when she posted a picture recently of us on our social media and we had done a podcast together on hers, I couldn't believe how many people were like, oh my gosh, I follow both of you. I like both of you. I've used both of your programs. So I can't believe it took me this long to get to know her. Um, but when we talked for her podcast, we clicked right away. I met her when she came out in San Diego. And I had 20 million questions for her of how she grew this business so fast to 110 million in the last three years. I said that correctly, 110 million in the last three years. My business has done nothing close to that, Amanda. So I had so many (laughs) questions for her. I thought, okay, instead of me like staying here all night asking you a thousand questions or a million questions, um, let me bring you on the podcast because I'm sure my listeners will want to know this journey and the story too. So thank you so much for being here, Amanda. I can't wait to dive in with you. I am so thrilled. It's going to be a very fun conversation. So first and foremost, I want to say this about her. Um, she's only 35. Okay. She's only 35 years old. She has four kids, four, all little, like young, like under the age of 10, right? They're young. Okay. She's a full-time working mom who built this crazy empire. And I'm going to get into the story because she actually told me she was following me years ago. She was doing, and tell me if I have this incorrect, Amanda, you were doing like fitness marketing for people. You were helping other brands build their marketing. Is that correct? Yes. I had an agency for other women in the wellness industry. And I was first exposed to you because you were sharing Pinterest tips. So I'm like, Ooh, you know, who is this girl, Natalie Jill? What are these Pinterest tips that she's sharing? And so I I remember following you way back then and learning about social media marketing from some of your posts. Awesome. Okay. So you were helping. And then you also yourself had this huge interest in nutrition and fitness. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. I started training clients in college and became a certified nutrition coach as well. Uh, but it was always kind of a side hustle. And I, I really helped people more so with marketing. So you were so successful at marketing others. What was going wrong or why pivot into doing your own thing? Like how, where did that vision come from? Yeah, that's such a great question. So my purpose as I ramped up my marketing agency was to equip and empower other women in fitness to earn significant income so they could recirculate their own wealth to their family, church, and community. It it really was an economic empowerment play because, you know, Natalie, the average yoga instructor, for example, makes $24,000 a year. Mm. That is not okay. It's under the poverty line. You can't put food on the table for your kiddos with $24,000 a year. So, you know, I became extremely passionate about helping friends of mine who were in the wellness industry to scale their own companies. Uh, But, you know, a few years into growing my digital marketing agency, I came upon a very unique problem that I wasn't anticipating. And the problem, the pain point that I came upon is that even though I was helping my agency clients get more eyeballs on their website, build a sales funnel, create better social media marketing strategies, their customers were leaving instead of sticking around because my agency client was not good with programming. Ooh, meaning so, the deliverables. so you could get them in, you could get them interested, but they weren't staying because the deliverable or the program wasn't nailing it. Right. They weren't seeing results. The fat loss program, the fitness program wasn't good. And so I decided in 2016 to start a beta program called the faster way to fat loss to test strategies. I'd already been working with clients in the gym for many, many years. I'd been leading group boot camps and, and ramping up my own virtual online training as well. Um, but I decided to incorporate all of the different strategies that had worked for me, had worked for my gym clients. And I created this little program with 11 former clients 
a few years, or excuse me, a few months into the program, my clients were seeing incredible results, just absolutely raving about the program. Um, I decided to call it the faster way to fat loss because it was very centered around the concept of intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately I said, you know what, I'm going to build a certification around this program and get it accredited or approved for CEUs with the biggest organizations in the fitness industry, and then allow my agency clients to become certified to run my program with their own book of clients. Uh, And so that's how it got started. So, okay. Before we get into that, cause I have a lot of questions there. Um, talk to me about the people pleasing aspect, because I would imagine when you were working with clients, helping them, I'm just trying to picture how this went and you're like, okay, I see a gap in the results and the deliverables. So I'm going to offer a program. Did you have a story come up around, okay, my clients are going to be mad at me. I'm now competing with them. How did you navigate that? Or maybe that wasn't even a conversation. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because when you say the phrase people pleasing like that, it doesn't even resonate with me. It's funny. Just earlier this morning at my office, (laughs) I was talking with some of my team members and I was just sharing about some criticism I'd gotten on social media for like just different random things. And I was like, the thing is, I literally cannot even be bothered. Like I just, (laughs) I'm so clear on my purpose. Mm. And I often say, you know, I had a purpose before anyone had an opinion. And for me, if I don't have dissonance over a strategy like testing a fat loss program, then it's you know definitely something I'm going to move forward with. It, it did not violate my conscience in any way to say, let me create a program, use it as a testing ground, and then ultimately have a better turnkey solution for my agency clients who really want to scale but don't want to do the programming or don't want to do the back end technology. So for me, it was just I mean solving a problem yeah. and you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe a few of them are like, Ooh, she's competing with us. I mean, I could care less. I don't remember even like, this is so amazing because this is what holds so many people back. The, the fear of that. What is somebody else going to say? What are they going to do? And that's why I wanted to ask you that question, because I find that visionaries leaders, they do not let the opinion of others stop them. They just don't. And it's, It is the first skill I like to work with clients through because when they're trying to create a vision of their own, because if they do not address it, it does hold them back. So I love Mm. that that you said that because I think you, fortunately in life, whatever reason you were gifted that, that ability to see that and not care. But I think a lot of people, it does hold them back. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I totally agree with you. And, you know, it's sad. I think fear of criticism holds more people back than failure ever will. (laughs) It's, It's really, you know, it's almost like a muscle that you have to develop. And through the years when, you know, I'd receive certain haters or things on social, like I've just had to shift my opinion about why that's even happening and, Mm -hmm. and really have compassion on the individual, like not even use ego, anger, or bitterness towards someone just say, you know what, I'm going to have compassion on them because something in their life is causing them to project their issues onto me uh, and, and, you know, just have to kind of move past it. Yeah. And had, and I want to share this for, if you're listening and you're like, well, gosh, I do have that people pleasing issue or I want approval of others. Had Amanda not listened to her idea that I have a purpose before you have an opinion, she wouldn't have helped 210,000 people. So that's, so it becomes a selfish thing to be stuck in people pleasing, I believe. 1000%. So, okay. So you had, you started a pilot program. It worked uh, with your 11 people. You decided you're going to do this. And then the first year, I think you said it did a million dollars. Is that correct? Um, you know, probably not that first year. It really was kind of that side hustle, just beta program, kind of testing it. 2016, I was still running my agency and that was 95% of my time. 2017, 95% of my time was helping other clients. Uh, And then really 2018 is when I said, you know, I'm going to really focus in on Fast Away. And and the reason that I did that is first and foremost, I had a baby at the beginning Mm -hmm. of 2018. And so I took a bit of a maternity leave. And what I experienced is that faster way as a digital online bootcamp was making money mm-hmm. while I slept without having to be on consult calls and mentorship calls and consulting with agency clients. And I'm like, gosh, you know, the scalability of that is so nice. Um, and, and so I said, you know, I've been trying to juggle these two companies for, uh, you know, a series of now years, let me pick one almost out of 
care and concern for my baby, who was my third at the time. Um, so I chose faster way instead of the agency, I shut down the agency to clients who were not associated with faster way. I had already built the certification, but was like really just kind of starting to get that off the ground. We had only maybe 80 certified trainers at that point in early 2018. Um, so since 2018, we've gone from about $1 million in sales for Fasterway specifically to over $110 million wow. in sales. So what I'm hearing is another pivotal step, um, which is being really focused on one thing. Yes. Because yes. a lot of entrepreneurs are guilty of the monkey mind and yes. wanting to create a million different things at one time. And you were focused on two and you even knew two focuses is splitting too much. So you doubled down on one. Yes. And I think yep. had you not done that, it wouldn't have happened this way. Mm, yeah. A mentor of mine shared a really good piece of advice with me in 2018. He said, the most successful entrepreneurs are the engineers. Uh, uh, or, or the accountants or the people who are able to just focus on one single thing for a decade. And so, you know, previous to that, I had come out with so many different online boot camps. I had a body after baby boot camp. I had a fit pregnancy DVD. I had a 21 day shred, you know, I had so many different things. And so I said, I'm going to focus on one single program, one single brand, one single company. And now, you know, a few years later, we've really seen the fruits of that. Um, and even now, you know, I have so many fun ideas, but I just refuse to lose focus on the main thing because anytime I do lose focus, we have kind of a bit of a momentum crisis yeah. and momentum's fragile. So you got momentum, you got to keep it going with, with focus. Um, so for me, that's been really key. Yes. Amanda, you, I feel like you're preaching to the, to someone who needs to hear it right now. That was me for sure. I'm the one with 19 million programs, <laughs> so, um, which all were great, but it was, it's, if I had just focused on one, yeah, I could be where you are with that. So it was just creating, 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 creating content. Mm. So your model, this was a little different, um, uh, where we yes. look at other fat loss programs, um, doing video academies or coaching calls or eBooks or DVDs or whatever it is. You decided to do a model where you are bringing in other instructors, yes, licensing them, training them, certifying them. Where did that idea come from? And was that hard to navigate that at the beginning? Was that scary because you didn't have a promise for them initially? Yeah, that's such a great, uh, uh, it's such a wonderful question. You know, for me, the creation of the certification was in response to the pain point and the problem of my agency clients not being good with programming. So it really was just a way for me to solve problems for people I cared about. Not really a business decision. Like it, 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 it wasn't, oh, let's make more money. Let's do this. In fact, the model when I first came out with the certification was someone would become certified for a low fee and then they would literally earn 100% commission on sales of the faster way, which makes no business sense. <laughs> and I had multiple business coaches say to me, that is not sustainable. That does not make sense. And my whole thing was like, listen, I am here to genuine, genuinely empower other women in wellness to earn income. Like I don't need the money. I'm looking to help them. And I'm also a firm believer in like, if you help other people reach their own goals, then good things will come back to you. Um, so that was the model. People would pay, you know, a thousand dollars, fourteen hundred dollars for the cert. They keep one hundred percent commission. We since have shifted the model just because we we provide so much more value coming alongside the trainer to support their client. So we really like out of the need to invest in our own staff team did shift the model to where we give a portion of the commission over to the certified trainer. Um, but it's still like an extremely generous model. You know, we're not an MLM where you get like 20% or like 10% commission on whatever, like we give you a substantial commission. Many, most of our coaches are earning still 75% commission. Um, but you know, for me, I, I definitely had to journey through some highs and lows when we first launched the certification and then did shift the model a bit. We lost, you know, a couple coaches who decided to go out and make their own program. Every single one of them has since fizzled, which is not surprising. And it's like, if people make decisions driven by ego, they're yeah. probably not going to be successful on term. So I don't, you know, even worry yeah. about the copycats. I'm trying to figure out. So 
I'm, I'm just trying to figure out like, so I'm looking at thinking of my business model. So for instance, yeah. my, my total body thrive program puts a bunch of women, not as many as you, but I'll do like probably 250 women at a time, go through total body thrive. And Amazing. the program is great. They get results, but I'm the mm-hmm. main coach. So they're showing up on zooms with me. They've got mm-hmm. me. So I'm just trying to picture what you're saying here. So like, if mm-hmm. I were implementing the model you're talking about, that would mean I'm bringing in Jane, who's an expert yes. on such and such, but she's using my program, but coaching people. I'm a little, help me understand yes. that. Are they adding yeah. in components or are they following your model? That's a great question. And you're absolutely right. So Jane is going to offer your program to her own book of clients. Most of the trainers I bring to the table have their own clients. And, and you know, that was my agency clients. They were already trainers and nutritionists and, and I'd already helped them kind of ramp up their uh, number of customers and clients, but the programming is turnkey. So their client gets access to my app. They do our daily workouts. They do the weekly meal plans. And then Jane, she answers questions and she's a cheerleader and she's a support, but she doesn't have to do any of that grind on the back end, which is a massive benefit to her because she can focus on encouraging and serving and marketing and sales instead of focusing on the nitty gritty programming that my team does so extremely well here at HQ. Um, So that's been like really, really beneficial to that trainer. Where do they answer? So like, it would be like in a Facebook group, they're answering questions. Are they on a Zoom leading calls or are you still leading calls? Or is that not even part of the program? So I typically lead a weekly Monday call, but it's, you know, pre-recorded content. And then the coaches, they can add additional FAQ calls. They can answer questions on, you know, WhatsApp or they're not required necessarily to add, you know, bonus content. But, you know, it's all about, um, creating a bit of a unique differentiator in the marketplace. You know, we have 2,700 coaches now, so it's what differentiates me. Maybe I'm soliciting for clients who are, you know, recently postpartum, maybe a different coach is soliciting for people who are, you know, postmenopause. So, um, you know, every Ah. coach kind of gives her own specific twist in some of the bonus material, but that's not a requirement either. So if Jane comes in and let's say she's the expert on um, body after baby, let's say that's like yes. her, her expertise, would she then do bonus content for the client she's bringing in or for the whole community? Does that give her that exposure to everybody in your network? Just for only her clients. Her yep. clients. So okay. She, so it could yep. be a one-off unique cis situation. Yes. Got it. Yeah. So then your trainers that come in, you vet them, make sure they're skilled, they've got gifts to offer, but they also need to learn your programming and be aligned with it, clearly. Like if they're not into intermittent fasting, that's not going to work, basically. Truly, truly, yeah. So we are pretty rigorous about our application and interview process. This year, we've only enrolled coaches twice. Uh, You know, we're like pretty particular. You've got to align with my values. You have to understand and appreciate the science. You have to literally go through a certification and pass with a 100% on your exam. Like we won't Mm -hmm. take anything less. Um, You have to like submit a video. So we see how good you are on video. So yeah, we're pretty particular about who represents us. And, you know, I like to remain exclusive in a marketplace where we could have 70,000 coaches we have 2,700 because yes. we don't want to oversaturate the marketplace with people who so are good. not representing the brand well. So this is what I love so much about you, Amanda. Like uh, uh, since I've gotten to know you, you're like such a true problem solver. So not only did you solve a problem for people, fat loss, which I totally get because I do that too, fat loss. You solved a problem for these trainers, nutritionists, amazing people that didn't know how to do programming. You solved a problem for them. You solved a customer service aspect because Mm -hmm. people in a program get a lot of personal attention now because they've got their trainer that brought them in or whatever it is. And you solved a huge problem during the last year and a half with quarantine, gyms closing, all the things, because not only did you give access to people, but you employed people. Right. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. 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 You know, last year, 2020, 2021, really the beginning of the year, it's been, uh, an important time for us last year when gyms shut down, we immediately started soliciting, you know, different gyms and saying, listen, we're going to provide scholarships for your trainers who are unable to work right now. So we were doing scholarships for the certification. If someone, you know, passed through the interview process. Um, but we gave trainers who otherwise had no ability to put food on the table for their families, a way to earn significant income. And we have trainers who are just absolutely thriving 
And, you know, we have been doing digital fitness for so long. I've been doing digital fitness since the flip cam. Like I would yeah, film myself on flip cam. And me too. <laughs> Those videos are still out there somewhere. <laughs> Literally. And it's like, you know, all these other big companies are like coming out with digital fitness. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I've been doing them. I'm like, yeah. OG oh, digital. So, <laughs> you know, people were coming to the program. We had a rush of clients, you know, in 2020 um, for the program and, and truly increased that lifetime value as well, because we've been just adding more and more in the way of resources and uh, accountability and community for our clients. But yeah, it's been a time of solving problems and uh, really being able to serve the marketplace. So awesome. Okay. I have some other questions here. Okay. Th- these like, ha- well, first of all, kudos to you on building this business. Um, so my next, my next question on that is are, did you have a business savvy? And that's what, let me explain that question. I think of myself as a master marketer. I'm really good at marketing and getting talking to people. I'm getting good at problem solving, getting people in. I'm really good at programming. I am not an amazing business person. I had to learn business from tons of failures. It took me years and years and years of failures to now feel like I have a grasp on it and I can actually help other people with that side because of my failures. You didn't seem to have that learning curve. So you just jumped right in and became uber successful. Were you born with that? Did you go to school for it? Like, where does that come from? (laughs) That's such a great question. You know, I do believe that I was blessed with an intuition around business models. Um, Even though I shared the comment earlier, how different business coaches were like, this isn't sustainable. Like, why are you giving away so much? I have been blessed with the ability to create a saleable, sustainable, scalable business model, while at the same time, strategically aligning incentives with the right people to generate more goodwill in the marketplace, you know, but, you know, I was the GM for a business incubator for a very short time. Um, and I really was just going through that process of solving problems, but then always with the mindset of how can I create a better solution for my certified coaches who want a sustainable business. Like case in point last year, because we have a membership model and that recurring revenue built in my coaches who are already established were so grateful for the recurring revenue, the financial piece of having clients in the VIP membership so that they could count on X, Y, Z amount of revenue and commission. You know, that is like, so valuable. And then you're not on this launch roller coaster of where you have to keep selling new people into a program. You can just do a really fantastic job serving your current clients with excellence to maintain a certain level of income. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, my dad is entrepreneurial. Um, he had a business, he quit his full-time job and started a business my senior year of college. Um, I have always been entrepreneurial, like high school, college, my freshman year, I was like building up this huge book of personal training clients. And I had like five jobs through college, you know, it's just always kind of been entrepreneurial, but the key is to marry that sustainable, scalable, saleable business model with effective digital marketing, um, which I think I've done well. And I also, you know, I have a career background in digital marketing, which is, it's like almost like a leg up on the perfect everyone. Storm. You've got the perfect storm <laughs> happening. You also have something that most people do not figure out early in business. Let me tell you what that is. I don't even know if you realize you do this. Most people, it takes them 10 years of up and downs to figure this out. You do not make it about you. Mm. Pretty much every business that has those failures, those obvious failures, they made it about them. They're mm. marketing themselves. They're making it all about how amazing they are. And it's until they have the failures, and I, and I say this from personal experience, and I say this from all the clients I coach into this, that until they have that, what the heck is going on? Why aren't I profitable? What is going on? And realize that, and they start truly making it about other people and serving them, that's when it changes. And you did that on all levels. Not only were you helping the end user, the client, you helped all the trainers make a name for themselves with this. So because you didn't make it about you, I believe that's a huge reason it's so successful. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I've for years been saying, this is not the Amanda Tress show. This is not me and I, this is we and us. Um, and yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not even sure kind of probably who 
slapped the ego out of me, maybe because I had kids so young and I just realized life wasn't about me. I don't know. <laughs> maybe because I have a husband who's like exceptionally humble and, uh, you know, keeps By the me way, grounded. She's, met new, she's been with her husband since elementary school. She met him in elementary <laughs> school. Like who, who does that? Like <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> Yeah, we met on the playground. He was burping the alphabet. So you know, love at first sight. Uh, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate you um, communicating that and articulating that. I, yeah, I've never really thought about it that way, but I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, if you look at some of the businesses you actually coached beforehand, if you think about those clients, mm-hmm. why, what were they doing it for? Were they doing it to serve others or to make it about them? So yeah. I, it's just a pattern I notice when yeah. clients come to me. And I'm looking at them when they're like, I have this big following, but nothing's working. And I look and it's like, you're making it about you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You have to them, make it about, yeah. And, and, you know, I, I was telling one of my writers this yesterday, he watched me kind of rewrite some copy. And I said, it's not about us. It's not about faster way. It's not about a man of trust. It's about the client whose problem that we're solving. And so I always start with that. And he watched me kind of rewrite and he's like, oh yeah, okay. That completely makes sense. Um, you know, we're, we're launching a church here locally. And I was looking at a landing page yesterday and I emailed the team and I was like, listen, it's not about the church and how many campuses they have. It's about the person in the community who's searching for a family and wants to connect. So yeah, I was just like, I've been yeah. rewriting copy all week to that, uh, to that theme. So thank you for that. So Talk to me about being a bomb of four and running this multi-million dollar business. Like, how does that happen? Like, do you have a hundred <laughs> nannies? You have, like, what, what is happening? How do you do that? I have one kid oh half gosh. the time and it's hard. So how do you, how do you do this? Yeah. You know, it is, it is a little nuts. I will say any industry event I go to, like recently I was at an event that, um, you know, I was like one of a few women, but I think I was the only young mom of young kids and four kids at that. And it is, it is like a little bit interesting when I look around, but kids help me focus. Like I have a 10 month old, a three-year-old, a second grader and a third grader. And the more kids I've had, the more focused I've become. It's like, I don't so you're have time more. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer I that. Say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I am so grateful for the clarity and the focus that I receive um because of of having kids, but we have help, you know, we have plenty of help. We have Annie and personal chef, and you know, people, a couple are already gonna be doing a hard eye roll. Of course, she's fit and healthy, she's got a personal chef. Listen, I am so grateful for that chef, but I look at it also as my opportunity to invest in a fellow female entrepreneur. Yeah. And when you shift your mindset to, I have now the ability to invest in a fellow female entrepreneur who is on my, I call them the trust family team to clean my house. I have an amazing, amazing team member who cleans my house, someone who preps our food, someone who helps with the kids. Like, I'm giving them the opportunity to now recirculate their own wealth. Uh, And, you know, I think there's so much guilt and shame for women around, you know, hiring someone to help clean. And well, you know, if you're not matching socks for your kids, you're less, lesser than, and it's like, uh, -uh. I am a fantastic mother, but I get to enjoy quality time with my kiddos because I'm not Mm -hmm. sitting there matching socks, which is if anyone listening is doing the laundry and the cooking fantastic. And I truly appreciate that. But for me, with my current bandwidth, I've chosen to invest in some female entrepreneurs and it has been a a really big key to my success. Here's what I want to add to that. First, I have a few things to say on this topic. First and foremost, anyone listening, when you get your business to $110 million, I hope you have a chef and nannies and all this stuff too, because you deserve that. You deserve that. That's the first (laughs) thing. The second thing is I guarantee if your business collapsed tomorrow and it was gone, and you had no incoming income, you would find a way to rebuild because that's who you yes. are, even yep. without the help. So that's baloney when people focus on that because that's who yep. you are. The the last the, the final thing I'm going to say to that, if that's the story in someone's head right now, like, oh, well, of course she's successful. She has this. You are focusing on circumstances. You are focusing on excuses. You're not focusing on possibility because I believe anyone with the right focus and the right vision, the right decision, the right habits, actions can create what you did. 
Now, I certainly have not created a $110 million business, but I know darn well, if I were to follow all of your actions, thoughts, and habits, I would also create, I don't know that I can do it, but I know that I could, if I committed to focusing on your thoughts, actions, and habits, I could do it. I believe that. So if you're listening going, well, oh, I don't have those things. I would encourage you to look at where you're focusing because Mm. focusing on why you can't have something is not going to serve and get you better. Absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that. That being said, I got a lot of thoughts, actions, and habits to change so I too can have a $110 million business. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, how? Honestly, like truly you can, uh, you know, with the amount of engaged followers that you have and the passion and values that you have, I have zero doubt that Natalie Jill actually could build a billion dollar brand. Well, I might need a man no to help me mind. do that. I, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know that I got it in me, but, but, but I do love, I love what I do. I love who I'm serving. I love how my, I love my business. I love what I, what I've created there. So maybe, or maybe I won't ever have a $110 business, a $10 million business, but I like entertaining the idea that I think anything is possible with thoughts, actions, and habits going in that direction. I believe. And I love that you mentioned that because building a billion dollar brand, which is ultimately what I'm doing is not everyone's definition of success. And, and, you know, for me, my definition of success has evolved based on the need that I sense in the marketplace. And then the potential that I know, uh, is within reach, but you might say for me, you know, 1 million or 3 million or 10 million a year is, is really great because based on my goals to give back, that is what I need. Or based on my legacy fund that I build for my daughter and her kids Yeah, that, you know, this is all I need. So it's, but you know, people who are listening need to consider what is your personal definition of success? Totally. And, and, and what is it based in? So I think that's a really important note. So true story. When I was sitting at true foods with Amanda and I was asking her questions, she said to me, I could help you. Do you? And I said, I I said to her, you'll remember this. I said, I don't know that I want that. I said that. And to me, it was a light bulb moment for me as well, that until you decide something, it will not happen. So unless Mm. I am in a place where I decide, Amanda, I'm ready to create a billion dollar business. And that's what my decision is. That's not going to, it's not going to just happen by accident. I do believe that. Yeah. For sure. Well, Amanda, this is awesome. This is so, so helpful um, for those, everybody listening, first and foremost, what's the name of your podcast so people can go there? Cause I know you interview amazing people on your podcast. Is that faster way to fat loss podcast or what is that? It's, it's the faster way podcast. Okay. And we have a recent interview with miss Natalie Jill herself. Definitely don't miss that, that interview. Yeah. If you uh, search faster way in the podcast apps, you'll find it. And then where do you, can people find you on Instagram? Where do you want them to go? You should go to at Amanda Tress. We have a business account for Faster Way to Fat Loss as well, which by the way, is far bigger than my personal account. Uh, but if you want to see any of the happenings of the Tress family or like behind the scenes from Faster Way HQ, definitely follow me at Amanda Tress. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. This has been so wonderful. And I hope that your listeners got even just a few bits of value. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen in as my guest today. If you found this episode valuable, please share it with friends and on social media. I don't advertise this show, so I rely on word of mouth and reviews to get it out in the world. The biggest thank you that you can give me is leaving me a review and a nice one, I hope, by the way. This is how others find these episodes. If you do leave me a review, be sure to message me at support at nataliejillfitness.com with a screenshot of your review because I would love to send you a free digital download of my DSR journal as a thank you. And please don't forget to connect with me on social media at nataliejillfit on Instagram and Facebook. Facebook.